What's going on everyone? My name is Triforce Addiction. Welcome back to another legendary comparison video where this time we are going to be doing a, yet again another comparison between three legendary weapons that of course all belonging to the same weapon. But this time around, it's going to be about the QQ9. And I know a lot of you guys out there have been waiting for a video like this. Um, every single time, every single time I made some sort of uh, like legendary comparison video, the one that usually comes to mind in the comments are, it was pretty much the melting point and the sig room. And you know, I, I never really got around to making it until now. And that's mainly because there, we have yet again another legendary for this weapon. So why not just compare all three of them together at the same time? So the way this is going to work is that of course I'm going to be listing all the pros and cons of each weapon. And of course whoever has the least cons and probably the most pros are going to win. So by the end of it we should find out which QQ9 legendary is the best out of the three. So of course we're going to talk about the history of each legendary first. Uh, in chronological order. So the first one we are going to be discussing, of course, is the Melting Point. So the Melting Point has been in this game for quite a long time, pretty much before the Gunsmith came out. As we all know, the QQ9 came out of Season 7 last year, and we did get the Legendary a season after. So yes, this weapon is like basically pre-Gunsmith old. So that's how old this thing is. So don't really expect it to be the best legendary out of the three, and that's mainly because it's kind of outdated. One thing to notice that it is reactive, but the game won't tell you that. If you do go into the arsenal section of the game, it doesn't really state that it's reactive, but the more kills that you get, the more of a burning effect the gun will have all over it. That's probably why it was expensive. It's reactive, but for some reason the game just doesn't tell you that it is. So cosmetically, uh, like I said, it's a very, very old legendary skin. Of course, it's not really going to look the best. But I do have to say, this, I think what makes this weapon good is probably just the animation effects or like the smoke that's revolving around the gun and how it just gets more hotter the more kills you get. Um, of course, if you take that off or if you don't have like any effects on it, you just pretty much have like a melted gun it just doesn't really look that great. I'd say out of the three this probably has to be the worst one by design. But of course that's the whole point of the weapon. It's supposed to look like it's melting. But in terms of beauty or I guess the cosmetics it's just it's not that great. I mean the iron sight's alright but it's just a chipped off circle. It's nothing really special. As for shooting sounds nothing really crazy. Um, well, actually there's no shooting sounds at all. It's pretty much the basic QQ9 shooting sound. In terms of death effects, um, not really that great, just basically involves the person melting. But at the same time, I mean, uh, there's already a lot of death effects in this game that involve players melting. So it's it's not really anything that crazy, like I said. Of course, the question is, does the death effect get in the way? Actually, no. If anything, out of the three, this is probably the least obstructing death effect that you'll find for the QQ9. Unlike the Moonlight or the Sigrun, where there's like a fang like just kind of in the way if there's someone behind that death effect. Yeah, you could kind of get screwed over that way, but with the melting point, they basically just melt down. It kind of like just makes way for you to see the next enemy. So yeah, like I said, the least obstructing uh, death effect out of the three. But I know I've kind of been trashing this weapon a little bit. I will say that if you do put your graphics on high or even very high, yeah, this thing is absolutely amazing, but of course I usually play on medium graphics, but yeah, like I said, it's it's only good based on your graphics settings. If you have it on medium like I do since I, you know, use the 120 frames option, yeah, it still looks good, but it's it's not as good as it could be. For legendaries, there shouldn't really be some sort of thing in the way to, you know, keep it from looking its best. That's the thing. So now we have a fan favorite, which is the QQ9 Sigrun. So a lot of people love this skin with a passion. This is probably the best designed QQ9 legendary skin, and probably one of the best designed legendaries in general. I'm sure there are many out there who use this weapon and would prefer this one over the melting point any day. So yeah, let's begin to talk about the Sigrun. So the Sigrun, I believe, came around season three or season four. It was around, I think, the old Western theme that returned to COD Mobile. So this was by far the most anticipated skin that I was waiting for during that entire season. And it was kind of amazing because it did get released a little bit earlier than usual because at the time we still had 
uh, that same usual release schedule where all legendaries get released Thursday night. But this time around, it got released on a Sunday night. So that, that was pretty, that, that was a very surprising thing, but I was happy at the same time. Even today, I still use this uh, weapon skin with pride because of just how amazing it looks. So like I said, the design in the outside without any effects on it, if it's just a base weapon itself, is probably the best out of the three. Well, actually, it is the best out of the three, no doubt about it. But there are some downsides that come with it. Of course, the death effect isn't... I mean, it's, it's amazing, but the thing is that it's very obstructing. So if you're trying to see past the enemy that you just killed and there's another person behind them it might actually cripple you a little bit in terms of shooting sounds i would say that the sugrun is probably second place and that's mainly because it only just has a shooting sound it doesn't have the extra reloading sound or anything like that like the moonlight counterpart this gun does also have some reactive effects of course overall in terms of kills or like the more kills you get it does not have any more ongoing animated effects on the outside but the only time it does react is whenever you do get a kill the eyes on the iron sight do light up every single time you get a kill it also does have a unique muzzle flash as well but it's not as noticeable as the moonlight i know i'm talking about the moonlight a lot and comparing it to comparing all the other skins to that one but don't worry it will get its turn to be shit on so one last thing that i do want to mention is that the iron sight for this weapon is phenomenal it's the best iron sight of all three without a single ounce of doubt so yeah overall the sigrun like i said is a fan favorite for the qq9 a lot of people love this skin and you know a lot of times when i do get killed while holding this weapon a lot of people do pick it up because they know about its beauty so yeah anyways let's move on to the moonlight so the legendary coming from the chinese version of call of duty mobile is the QQ9 Moonlight, dubbed Mooner in that variation of the game. So this was my most anticipated legendary skin to get for Season 7, and that's mainly because, I mean, I'm a huge fan of the QQ9, and, you know, having another legendary skin is just, like, it's it's heaven for me. But, you know, upon getting it, I mean, it's it turns out it's not really the best legendary skin. I thought it was going to be the best out of the three, but it turns out it's it does that doesn't seem to be the case. I'm not trying to say that it's the worst legendary out of the three, but it does have some pretty disappointing features to it. First and foremost is the iron sight. Out of the three, it's the most obstructing, so I would say this one receives last place. In terms of reactive effects, not the best either because only the side of the gun has any sort of animations to it. So in terms of the physical design, it's really, really good, but I feel like the Sigrun has the upper hand on this one. Also, earlier I did state that this was like the worst iron sight out of the three because it's the most obstructing, but I will say in terms of design and just, you know, setting aside the fact that it is obstructing, it's still very well designed. So now we move on to the muzzle flash. So in terms of muzzle flashes, this one is the best one out of the three because it does stand out more and it looks really well designed. And man, for the death effect, it is definitely in first place. And I know a lot of people are going to hate me for this, but I feel like this is probably the most unique out of the three. Because I mean, if you think about it, with the fangs from the Sigrun, it's very similar to the Wicked Claw from the DRH. This one is its own thing. It basically involves a moon coming up and pretty much exploding into this huge like light ball of energy. It looks amazing and very, very majestic. So yeah, this one definitely gets first place for the death effect. So now let's focus on the sounds of the weapon. And like I said, the Sigrun does have its own unique shooting sounds, but this one has a little bit more to provide because this one also has a different reloading sound as well. So yeah, but the thing is that with this one, it's a lot more noticeable than the Sigrun. It's, it basically feels like a completely different gun, giving it like a very futuristic type of feel to it. So while I was editing this, I decided to kind of use a different formula of ranking. So I will have the same features, but I will rank each skin accordingly based on placement. So, for example, the melting point will have third in physical design and, you know, the rest will be second or first place. So I'm pretty sure you guys get the idea. 
So here are the rankings that I established for the melting point. So I did put third place for physical design, second for animations, third for death effects, third for sound effects, second for iron sight, as well as third for muzzle flash. So now here are the rankings for the QQ9 Sigrun. So the physical design is first place, animation is first place, death effects second place, sound effects second place, iron sight first place, muzzle flash second place. And now moving on to the placements for the final legendary weapon, which is of course the moonlight. I did give the physical design second place. I gave animations third place, death effects first place, sound effects first place, iron sight third place, as well as muzzle flash being in first place. So anyways, there you have it. Um, of course, all of these rankings are based on my own opinion. Uh, feel free to let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to leave a like. Make sure to subscribe for some more comparison videos like this. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.